Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Leung. So in this video, I'm going to talk about a basic technique to analyze the pedigree in the basic genetics topic. Before that, I would like to recall some basic concepts including the role of the genes, symbol for genetic study, and the test cross. So if you think that you are familiar with those ideas already, so you can choose to skip these parts and jump to the special skills which I would like to share with you all. Firstly, I would like to talk about the role of the genes. The genes can give instruction for protein synthesis. According to different instructions, the cells can put amino acids in the correct order to form proteins for different purposes. We shall discuss it in details in the chapters of molecular genetics. There are different types of protein produced including the structural proteins to build up our body just like the hair and skin and the functional proteins like enzymes and hormones to catalyze and regulate the metabolic activities respectively. And the enzymes in turn control the chemical reactions, the metabolic activities that will create the bodily characteristics of the organism. And before the next concept, I would like to introduce two YouTube channels, which I appreciate a lot. The closer you look, the less you see. Of course, they provide a lot of biology videos for learning and doing revision in biology. For the channel of Biology Man, that means uh, produced by Miss Man. So actually, she does not only create the uh, Cantonese video, but also the English video. So you can take a look at this. And the other channel is a work hard pay cost. I appreciate this channel a lot. It's not only provide you the concept uh, for revision or doing exercise, but also produce some card games for the students to do revisions. So I highly recommend you guys to subscribe these two channels for biology revision and study. Secondly, I would like to recall the basic ideas of alleles for genetic study. Since we are going to study the pedigree, we have to get some common language to communicate. There are two types of alleles which we learned in the chapter of basic genetics. They are dominant and recessive allele. Dominant allele is an allele that masks the effect or expression of another allele in heterocyclic condition. It's usually represented by a capital letter. Recessive allele is an allele with its effect Mastered by the other allele in heterocyclic condition is usually represented by a small letter. When two alleles controlling a characteristic are identical, the organism is said to be homozygous for that character. For example, homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. When the two alleles controlling a characteristic are different, the organism is said to be heterocyclic for that character. So you can take a look at the diagram showing a pair of homologous chromosomes to recall the meaning of homozygous and heterocyclous. If both members of the heterocyclous carrying the same type of allele, this situation is regarded as the homozygous, just like the capital letter C and the small letter D here. They are homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive. If the members of the homologous chromosome carry different types of allele, this situation is regarded as heterozygous. For example, the capital letter A and, uh, and the small letter A, and also the case of capital letter B and the small letter B. And there is a friendly reminder for you all. When we are drawing a genetic diagram by ourselves, we should avoid using some letters to label the allele. For example, C, J, K and so on because the handwriting will need to confusion for others when they are reading your genetic diagram. After talking about the alleles, I would like to recall the relationship between the phenotypes and the genotypes. Surely, they represent different ideas. Phenotypes represent the outward appearance which can be seen and observed, like your hair color, skin color, the height, right hand or left hand. The genotype represents the genetic composition of the allele. Basic ideas can be summarized from the table. As recessive allele cannot express itself when it is accompanied by a dominant allele, so an organism expressing recessive characteristic is always homozygous. An individual expressing dominant character can either be homozygous dominant or heterozygous because once they have the dominant allele, so the dominant characteristic can be expressed. 
After we have those scientific terms in our mind, we can talk about the genetic study in depth. From the classic genetic study conducted by Mandel, the fundamental concept of genetics was developed gradually. Just like any scientific investigation, Mandel made observations and asked questions to construct the ideas and the knowledge about genetics. After crossing the purely tall and dwarf plants, he found that no dwarf plants in the first generation. However, the dwarf characteristic did not disappear forever. The dwarf plants appeared again in the second generation. This observation led to the Mandel's first law of inheritance and helped us to develop the concept of dominant allele, recessive allele, phenotype and genotype later on. With the name of the genetic study, of course, we perform different tests to identify the possible genotypes of the organisms under investigation. A famous genetic study is called test cross. Test cross is used to test whether an organism with dominant characteristic is homozygous dominant or heterozygous. In the cross, the unknown organism T with a question mark is crossed with an organism with the recessive characteristic double small letter T. If all offspring shows the dominant character, so that question mark should be capital letter T. That means the unknown is homozygous dominant. If both dominant and recessive offspring appear, that question mark must be smaller letter T. So that's why the unknown organism is heterozygous dominant. So test cross sounds powerful to test the genotype. However, there are some limitations at the same time. So the first two limitations, you have to know it in DSC level. Test cross is time consuming because it takes a long growing time in each generation. Secondly, since the fertilization is a random process, it requires a lot of data from a large number of offspring for reliable data and limitations three and four. These two limitations you have to study uh, genetics more in depth to understand. At this moment, make sure that you understand the first two limitations. In this part, I would like to recall the nature of science as well. Science is affected by the technology and the types of equipment available at the time. In the past, Mandel, he did not have any technique like genetic testing or genome mapping, uh, which are modern advancements which allow more efficient and detailed information about one's genotype to be determined. Test cross, however, are still used this day and have created excellent foundation for the development of genetics. Apart from the test cross, the genotype of an organism with dominant character can be determined by cell fertilization. However, this method cannot be applied in unisexual organisms such as human or fruit fly. Therefore, we finally come to the last revision part of the genetic study, which is the analyze of the pedigree. Since we do not only study the plants and other animals like insects, but also we are interested in human beings ourselves. However, it's difficult to study human inheritance because the crossbreeding cannot be performed easily. We just cannot ask somebody, for example, uh, they have a certain characteristic under investigation to reproduce in order to fulfill our investigation purpose. Meanwhile, the time scale from one generation to the next is very, very long. Therefore, we construct the pedigree as a record of the phenotypes of a uh, different family members to construct the family history. There are genome mapping and DNA testing kits in the market nowadays. We learn the pedigree analyze as the beginner level in the genetic study because we have to learn how we can deduce the possible genotypes without relying on any technology. It's just like we learn about the basic calculation arithmetic before we learn to use the calculator. This helps us to develop the mindset of genetic study. After the quick revision, let's take a look at the example showing the 10 star easy skills to analyze the pedigree. In the following two questions, we are going to study the pedigree. The pedigree shows the inheritance of a certain characteristic controlled by a pair of alleles located on an autosome. As mentioned above, the crossbreeding cannot be performed due to the ethical reasons. We cannot ask the individuals to keep giving birth until they reproduce the affected children. Meanwhile, the time scale from one generation to the next is very long. Therefore, we collect the information from the family history to construct the pedigree. Part 8 is asking which crosses can be used to deduce which phenotype is dominant. And Part B is asking which are the probable genotypes of the 
individuals one and two. Two questions are highly related as usual. You have to deduce the dominant and recessive characteristic first, then you can identify the possible genotypes based on the phenotype. In part A, I'm going to introduce you a very convenient skills to deduce the dominant and recessive characteristic. Go to thinking logic and that skills, I call it out of nothing triangle logic to determine the dominant and recessive allele. The name of this skill is just like someone plays the magic to pull a card from their empty hand. Here, grab one here, 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 here. Firstly, you have to realize the criterion of the out-of-nothing triangle. The characteristic does not appear in the parent's generation but appear in the offspring generation. According to the criteria, cross X is not the choice because the parents in cross X, one parent is normal and one parent is affected. Then it's not that surprised they can give birth to normal children. For cross Y, it doesn't match the criterion as well. It is because the normal parents still give birth to normal offspring. No surprise at all. Therefore, cross X and Y are not qualified. Let's take a look at cross Z. The parents are normal, this means that the disease characteristic does not appear in the parents' generation. However, they can produce the affected offspring individual free and his sister. This match the criterion of out of nothing. So in next in next video I shall talk about the secrets of out of nothing triangle. Now I just show you that what the meaning of the triangle is. In the out of nothing triangle, it contains two heterocycles parents. Uh, it's just like in the cross set, they show the dominant characteristic. Then they can produce the offspring who is homozygous recessive to show the recessive characteristic. So that's why it is called out of nothing triangle. So in part A, the cross set is the answer. And we can also draw the conclusion that the normal allele is the dominant allele, while the affected allele is the recessive allele. And it is the genetic diagram. Two heterocycles parents, they can give birth to the recessive uh, offspring. And also they can still give birth to some uh, offspring with the dominant characteristic. For part B, individuals 1 and 2 are the targets to be studied. We need to determine the possible genotypes of them. From the conclusion drawn by part A, the normal allele is the dominant allele while the affected allele is the recessive allele. And by using the out of nothing triangle, it's found that the female in cross set must be heterocycles. She may receive the recessive allele from either parents in cross Y. So that's why individual 2 can be homozygous dominant or heterocycles. In cross X, the affected female who is homozygous recessive mates with the individual 1. In fact, it can be regarded as the test cross. And we find that all of the three offspring are normal. According to the concept of test cross, can we determine that individual 1 must be homozygous dominant? And the answer is no because the sampling size is very small. That's why we do not have enough data to confirm that individual one must be homozygous dominant. Therefore, individual one can still be heterocycles and homozygous. So that's why the answer is D. For the full version of this question, you can check the assignment video of chapter 26. And now it's time to check that if you are really equipped the skills of finding the out of nothing triangle. This pedigree shows the inheritance of a condition caused by the recessive allele. In fact, the question doesn't tell you which characteristic is controlled by the dominant or recessive allele. So it's time for you to find out the out of nothing triangle first. Then you can deduce that the parents in the out of nothing triangle are in heterocycles condition. Meanwhile, try to apply the concept of test cross to help and it will help you to determine which individuals must be heterocycles. Check your answer in the description and the comment section. And next part, I shall teach you all the steps of answering the long questions in basic genetics. Enjoy, see you next time, bye bye.